So, uh, so this is basically my profile in a nutshell. Um, I'm actually a BSc biotechnology graduate. So um, my initial apprehension was that would I be able to, um, you know, handle the subjects that CAT asks us to take, um, especially when it comes to quant. Um, I am a PCB student. Biotechnology basically uh, familiarized me with a few management topics in my undergraduation, but I did not have any formal education in literature or analytics or anything that could help me um, for CAT. So because of that, um, I did a proper um, research and survey on what classes could help me join or should I self-prepare or what should be uh, my strategy uh, moving forward. And um, at the end, I decided to join IMS um, near my, uh, it, it was uh, near my house. So I knew that uh, that convenience would be um, some, would be an added advantage to me as well. And uh, that was also one of the primary reasons why uh, I had uh, mentors available at the back of a call. And anytime I had doubts, they would be immediately solved. The, the rooms that I had available there could be used for studying. Now, um, the thing is, I graduated in around June to July of um, 2022. So I had around close to three to four months to prepare. My first exam was set to be on 13th of November. I decided to take NMAT before I took CAT. So CAT is, is a very uh, important exam. And I wanted to ensure that I did not have any exam jitters when I would um, sit for CAT. So I decided to schedule my first attempt of NMAT two weeks prior to CAT and to also gain a gauge and understanding on how well I would perform in an exam environment and what better could I do. So... Um, yeah, I, I'll just go ahead with my strategy first. Um, so when it comes to VARC, I think most people tend to face problems when um, when they're not familiar with how difficult a vocabulary can be in essays, especially research articles or something that is domain knowledge heavy or it tends to be technical. So the one thing that would help me is that... Um, having a consistent reading habit it is not necessary like people will tell you to read non-fiction books you will get recommended self-help books a lot but that doesn't necessarily have to be the case to develop an interest in reading you would have to have interest in the material first to ensure that you are interested to ensure that you keep reading so i believe fictional novels of genres that you may like are something that could help you and um, other than that, once you feel that you have developed a good uh, reading level, you can progress to articles from the Hindu or Aeon. And uh, reading those article da articles daily will actually help you um, build up your vocabulary and your comfort with uh, difficult topics gradually. And uh, Word Power Made Easy is one book that I would recommend to everybody, irrespective of your fluency in the language. So it is, it's an affordable option for everybody. And uh, barely takes 10 minutes of practice daily to um, understand how root words function, how you can derive the meaning from a word even when you don't know the word. So it helps you, it, it, outright it helps you in exams like ZAT or SNAP where directly vocabulary meanings are asked. But in CAT, even understanding what the uh, reading comprehension is trying to say contextually could be helpful if you refer to this book. And uh, one advice would be to practice daily. There's no slacking off when it comes to understanding language. You cannot learn it a week prior, two weeks prior. It is something that you need to know holistically, unlike a quant where you can choose to eliminate a few topics that you're not comfortable with. So um, practice daily and understand what topics you're comfortable with. So since I come from a science background, I am comfortable when it comes to reading technological concepts, when it comes to biotech, genetic engineering, and anything that is related to science, I'm comfortable with. But when it comes to articles based on economics or uh, how nations function, that tends to get a little technical for me. So I usually um, decide to attempt it at the end. So out of the four RCs, since I have a good reading speed, I would usually end up attempting all the RCs. And uh, if you want to ensure that you are maximizing your marks, um, ensure that you're going in a sequence that you are comfortable in. So for me, science would come first, economics would come second, and philosophy would come at the end. And um, there are also some narrative passages that are easier than um, ones that are based on jargon. So those are the ones that you could choose to attempt first. Now in verbal, your strategy will it's best tailored to yourself and you will develop it the more the mocks that you take, the more you get to know yourself and your comfort zone. So that is one big advice that I'd give for uh, VARC.
and um, also what happened with my cat was that um, I had my exam in the third slot which was in the evening and there was a different type of a question that had been added as a surprise so if you have been scheduled in the later slot ensure that you have someone that you can talk to who appeared in an earlier slot so that you're not surprised in the paper so that you're familiar if there is a new addition and you can worse yourself with it like so that you're comfortable with that type of a question then when it comes to DILR and quant, uh, DILR is a very volatile subject. Like you may practice a thousand sums and there could still be something unknown that could be thrown at you in the final paper. And the only way to ensure that you perform the best is by ensuring that you um, attempt at least one set daily. So there's a YouTube channel called Aptitude Jab that I'd um, usually refer to they just have 10 minute sums daily and it does not depend on your practice doesn't necessarily have to be of difficult sums you don't have to practice difficult sums every day you just need to understand and figure out what kind of question requires what approach it will develop your thinking in ways better than you feel and uh in dilr um one thing that I advise is that do not flip between sets in the exam. Usually when you don't understand, you don't feel that a sum is getting cracked in the first five minutes, you tend to get agitated, you tend to get nervous or lose your composure in the middle of the paper. So to ensure this, make sure that you're allotting at least 10 minutes to a set, hunkering down on solving that until you get the answer. After eight, at the eight or seven minute mark, if you feel that you're not able to solve it, then it is okay to move on to the next question. But do not switch between sets. It will just confuse you and take up time more. And uh, when it comes to practicing, I'd suggest um, dividing your day, whatever time you have for practice, divide it into the 50, 30, 20 segment. So 50% of your time should be devoted to your weakest section. My weakest section was quant. I needed practice for that most. So I would divide 50% of my practice time for quant, 30% to DILR. And verbal was easier for me. So I would uh, practice it for only 20% of the time. Apart from that, uh, most people, uh, you know, will provide you with strategies that attempt 11 questions in quant, attempt 7 questions in quant, and you'll be comfortably in the 98 to 99 percentile range. My question, my, my suggestion is to not go in with a cemented strategy. You ne never know when the paper is easy. People will end up scoring more. They will be, they'll end up marking more answers and that could drive up the cutoff marks significantly higher. So you do not want to be caught in a position where you lost out because you did not want to take a risk. So do not go with that set strategy. Do not take it upon your ego to solve any question that you think should be easy for you if it's your area, if algebra is the, is, is the area that you're comfortable with. It is not necessary to solve every question on algebra. There might be some questions that are too difficult, end up taking too much time. Instead, you could be attempting some easier arithmetic-based questions that are immediate sitters and could be cracked in 30 seconds. So just adapt with the paper and do not go with the set strategy. And also... Um, the best thing that helps with quants is like once you're done revising all your syllabus, it's not necessary for you to go through every sum of every topic. Every year, there are certain topics that get more weightage and um, maximizing marks comes at realizing what you are good at. So ensure that you're solving all the past year question papers. Most of the question types are same, only the difficulty level may vary. And um, accordingly, you will be able to uh, ad ad adapt much faster. So I remember the first mock that I took, I decided to map my entire progress throughout my CAD preparation journey. So the first mock that I took, I had an overall percentile of 50. And I think DILR was at 18 or 20 percentile. So that was one benchmark that I put myself at. I cannot go any lower than this. And this is where my journey begins. And then final mock that I took was one week prior to CAT, and it was a good enough score. And my final CAT score uh, ended up at 98.38 percentile. So that range was only possible because I was regularly mapping my progress. And there's also, I had also during the paper, during my CAT exam, what happened was that uh, verbal was decent enough. But the moment we moved on to DILR, um, there were four sets. So usually I make it a point to attempt at least two sets. And this time, the difficulty for DILR was off the charts. Like that was the common consensus, consensus from every every aspirant that took the test that year. And what happened with me was that the uh, the two sets that I chose to prioritize they ended up actually being very difficult. 
So with five minutes left, I hadn't marked a single question. And as you may be aware that CAT has a sectional cutoff. So if I did not clear the cutoff for DILA, but still ended up scoring 97, 98 percentile, it wouldn't matter because I would never get the calls from colleges. So I remember I had a mentor who had told me that it's not over until it's over. Give it your best shot. And that just, I just remembered that in the middle of the exam. And I thought, you know what, I have to be, there's a good chance I'll have to be back next year for another CAT attempt. So whatever half-baked sets I had, I decided to take a shot. There were 13 MCQs. The rest were type and type answers. So I chose random answers that I, th that I thought would be, you know, uh, well suited according to the numbers that I had. And I actually get uh, ended uh, with a percentile in DILR of 85.25. And 85 percentile is the cutoff for most colleges. So that is something that really worked in my favor because I decided to take a shot at myself. I decided to take the risk. And... It is very important to not let your performance from one section bleed into another section. So the moment quant started after DILR, I ensured that I was free of all this tension. I had nothing to lose at that point. So I ended up performing well in quant. And in fact, for all subsequent exams, I scored more in quant than I did in verbal. So you just need to remember that do not give up in the middle of the paper. And also, it's very important to remember to, to stay grounded during the paper. If you find that the exam is too easy, then you need to remember that it will be easy for everyone. Do not get complacent there. Just give it your best shot. And if you feel that the exam is too tough, it's fine. It's going to be tough for everybody else. So do not lose faith and attempt to the best of your ability. Don't let any of this um, affect your performance that might you know be detrimental. And uh, then I come to miscellaneous prep. So the thing is, um, IFT until last year had a special, um, uh, had, a, had a different exam. IFT specifically was conducted by the um, National Testing Agency. This time it has been scrapped. IFT will be accepting CAT scores from this year. So it is, so if you are uh, targeting IFT, um, I'd suggest getting a good grip on CAT. And, um, well, the GDP preparation and all, it comes at the end. So that is something that we, we can cover some other time. But um, apart from your CAT preparation, apart from um, the sums and all that you're solving, you need to ensure that you take mocks regularly, at least in the beginning, once a week should be your target. And now with 45 to 50 days, if, the, if you have 45 days left for CAT, then I'd recommend at least twice um, a week. Two mocks a week should be attempted. Uh, towards the end, just take mocks and um, analyze them. Spend proper time in understanding where did you go wrong and what concept you could improve on. And I'd suggest that um, one or two weeks prior to CAT, do not uh, think about learning any new concepts. Just focus on what you know. Focus on strengthening those areas. And in fact, my mentors had always advised me that even during the preparation stage, you should take um, regular breaks every week, like one day where you're just not studying at all. Because CAT is an aptitude-based test. It is not depend. It is not memory-based that you memorize something a day prior, warm it up in the paper, and then you're sorted. It is something that tests the freshness of your mind and how well you can perform in a high-pressure situation. So accordingly, you need to ensure that you stay fresh, that you, uh, you're in a good frame of mind. And that really helps. So two days prior to CAT, I did not study anything. Two days prior, I was just, I focused on relaxing, having a good diet, chilling with my friends. My classes also would arrange random meetup sessions with friends where we would discuss our favorite sitcoms, books, movies, just to ensure that you stay fresh for the exam. Do not, this is not a high pressure exam. It, it is, CAT is not a tough exam. It is just a question of how well you know yourself and how well you can strategize in the paper. So take regular breaks and more so than anything else, I would recommend um, keeping up with GK. So reading newspapers will help you a lot, but um, having um, static GK knowledge, being aware of what goes around in the country, what policies are forming your own opinions based on what someone else has to say, based on what situations are going on, that will really help you develop a good mindset for your GDPI preparation as well. And um, I think for beginners, um, I would recommend fin shots. Finance usually tends to be very technical heavy. So if you want to familiarize yourself with financial concepts, which will help you in your VERC as well and your interviews, um, I think FinShots is a very good website that you can use. And Think School has a YouTube channel that covers a lot of case studies. 
and those case studies will actually help you in your interviews as well especially if you're targeting marketing uh, as your domain of choice um, there are colleges like spgen that have a special technical round interview that they do not expect you to know all the terms or every concept but it would it is a very good advantage to have when you know case studies that others wouldn't know like for example for ift i had quoted the e topal initiative by itc and my entire interview was driven by that on why i wanted to be a part of the fmcg industry so having all this knowledge being comfortable with it will actually help you in all your exams and extra preparation as well and i would also recommend to take omex um, people usually have uh, this fantasy of attending just the iims they'd rather take a baby iim over any other college like nmims ift mdi gurgaon but the thing is you do not need to run after that tag it does not depend on where you go you could do well irrespective of which college you are at it just depends on what your destiny is how well you are prepared and what your aptitude is because no matter what you will shine through and in fact there was a very uh, i i have poor acads in 12th grade so i would not get calls from a lot of colleges i would be deterred by that process but i had my mentors who would always tell me to always be a duck like that was just one uh, advice that they'd give me that paddle furiously under the surface and stay calm on the top so it was something that i'd drawn on a sticky note and put it on my notice board and i'd always look at it before my um, interviews and exams as well so this is just a scanned copy of the drawing that i, I had on my board so i just say um, appear for omets as well a lot of good colleges are non iims they have great placements great faculty and um, for a lot of people if cat does not go well they have other options that they can bank on you have xlri through zat you have myca through mycat simb um, scmhrd through snap so and mdi and ift fms can all be targeted through cat so if you want to have those options open it will be a, a good uh, fallback and um, you will actually end up understanding what is the difference between a non iim top tier college compared to a second or a third generation iim so that is also the reason why i decided to not go ahead with any of my other iim converts and instead pick uh, ift as my choice of preference and as i had mentioned in my um, introduction that um, prior to joining i did not have formal work ex but i had my own startup for 2 years close to 24 months and um, that uh, dealt in import of journaling supplies so it was a very niche field and that is something that i was interested in and that is why i decided to select ift as my go to school uh, since i would be specializing in international business so it is something that would help me in terms of trade and um, we we do have extra subjects that i could person knowledge that are not covered in other colleges so that is one lucrative factor to look forward to and uh, yeah mostly that's about it um, this is this just covers my journey but if you have any specific questions that you would want me to address this is my qr code that you can scan and you can find me on linkedin i'd be more than happy to help with any help that you may require and well, that's about it so thank you pushpi thank you so much and uh, one of the queries from uh, one aspirant uh, on the chat was um uh, how to improve the accuracy and fluency in para symbols so could you uh, guide on that also sure sure so when it comes to verbal as i mentioned it's not about selecting the right option it is about uh, knowing what options to eliminate so once you are eliminating what is not probable what you are left with is the answer that's the basic uh, competitive that every sherlock fan knows but uh, when it comes to specifically para jumble so i'd suggest um practicing on finding out the links between two or three sentences if you look at our question in and it starts with a conjunction there is a very good chance that it it cannot be the first um statement it has to be somewhere in the middle and ensure that if there is something out of context or a pronoun is being you like it's they are this that this is something that it, it is being introduced out of context so it cannot be the uh, sentence that starts off a para jumble it cannot be the end there has to be some conclusion that can be seen at the end so practice will improve your para jumbles and identifying what pattern is there when it comes to forming a link between the two